Well, hello everyone. Welcome to day number nine of this 30 days, 30 days, let's try that again, 30 days of Taker video series. That's right, 30 videos in 30 days about the life, career, and legacy of Mark Calloway, who we all know better as The Undertaker. And today's video is a Q&A, specifically around the era of time from, let's say, 1996 until 99-2000, ministry taker and corporate ministry taker. And, you know, for I think a lot of you that watch this channel, that's the taker that you probably actually grew up with. Whereas I grew up a little bit more with, like, the original Dead Man, just because I'm an old fossil. Um, but there are a lot of you, like, that you're in your late 20s, early 30s, like, this is the taker that resonates the most with you. This is the taker that a lot of you enjoyed the most and certainly a lot of fun and crazy things for this during this period of time in Taker's career. So thanks to all of you that took to Twitter at OTR Essentials, the Twitter handle, and you should follow uh, to ask your questions. We'll do a couple more Undertaker related Q&As throughout the month and make sure you smash that subscribe button so that way you get updated anytime that I do another one of these 30 Days of Taker video series. Horror Movie Review 73 is going to kick us off by asking, Did you enjoy Austin and Taker's on and off rivalry in 1998 and 1999? Also, where would you rank Austin in terms of Taker's best rivalries? I got the Austin Taker rivalry, like some of the some of the segments and the the segments, skits, some of those things, like they were good. The matches, I don't know that they were all that good. In terms of Taker's rivalries, I wouldn't put Austin in the top five. Like, it's a notable one that he had in that period of time in his career, but I don't think it's one of the best that he ever had, for sure. Um, Power Spy in One asks, which theme was better, Dark Side in 1998 or the Ministry theme in 1999? Now, that Ministry theme in 1999, if I remember correctly, that's the one that had uh, Taker kind of like speaking in tongues and shit, right? Because if that's the one I'm thinking of, then that is absolutely the one. Like, nothing wrong with the 98 theme. Like, a lot of good themes um, that Taker had during that time. And, and I probably lean a little bit more towards the ministry one. Uh, James Faluca, thoughts on Mania 13 and if Taker should have faced Mankind instead? Because come on, and as much as you love Sid as I do, he had no business being in that main event. Would Mankind have shit his pants in the main event of a WrestleMania? Sid did. So no. Sid was fine. Leave Sid alone. If you want to say based off of the story and issue that Taker and Mankind had in 96, you know, should they have maybe faced at WrestleMania 13? Maybe? But it would have been a long time to draw it out from, you know, the summer to get all the way to the next end of winter, spring. Um, so, no. Mania 13, like, it's cool. It should have been sit-in taker. Rick Styles, 1985. Do you think the Wrestle Mania 13 main event would have been better if it was Vader versus Taker for the title? I do not. I don't know how well those dynamics would have worked. I'm not sure how well that story would have worked. And you're asking me to pick somebody over Sid. Come on now. Rick. Rick. Psycho Sid. You want me to pick somebody over Psycho Sid? We're live, pal. No. MJ, make a podcast. Where does Taker versus Mankind feud rank with you um, amongst Taker's all-time feuds? In terms of his all-time feuds, it's number two. Kane's got to be number one, doesn't it? But the Mankind feud, like, the layers that it had to it and it was off and on, he came back to it over a couple of years, like, it's very, very, very high up on the list for me. I go back and look at some of those matches and some of those segments and some of those moments, like, I love that portion of Taker's career. Uh, Dalek of Chaos, if either man were in a better position in their life during this time, who would have made the better higher power? Ted DiBiase or Jake the Snake Roberts? Um, <laughs> the higher power. It was me, Austin! 
It was me all along. <laughs> God, that was like peak attitude error, sheer stupidity. This makes no sense, yet it makes all the sense in the world. It doesn't matter because it involves Vince. It's 1999. It's going to be flipping gold. <laughs> but to answer your question, I could have went with Jake the Snake Roberts, man. Like, that would have been some dark, sinister stuff if they would have been able to do that. Uh, Kyle Garner, 92. I love the Ministry Taker theme song. Was and still is very creepy. Agreed. It's fantastic. Of all of Taker's themes, where does this one rank for you? And how important is the right theme for a wrestler? Um, it's at the very top of the list, and you're absolutely right. The right theme could mean everything. We used to talk about it on the old Off the Rope Show channel that people popped for Randy Orton's theme, not for Randy Orton. Like, that music is the introduction. It's the first, you know, kind of passing, you know, introduction of that wrestler. It's the thing that perks people up. Like, a great theme can accentuate the character, make the character... A really dumb or bad theme can absolutely sink them. So yeah, having the right theme song that fits the personality, fits the character, gets the fans in the right mindset of what they're about to see is critical and vital. And one piece, and often very underrated piece, of what can make a true superstar. Uh, the Real BN Nerd. Ministry Taker is a better version of Taker in my opinion, but I hated the members they chose to be in the ministry other than the brood. Most of them seem to out of place or job guys. So my question is, who would you have put in the ministry instead? That's a, that's a great question. Like, <sighs> you just don't want to admit that you love Midian Investor, do you? <laughs> um. Hmm. I have to think about that one. I really don't know who else I would have put in there. Like, at the end of the day, it was about Taker anyway, so what difference did it make? Wheels1987 asks, on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate Undertaker's sweatsuit during his work shoot on Raw in 1998? <laughs> his sweatsuit game was on point that night. I'll give him a 10. That was fantastic. Like, see Taker come out like that, you're like, what in the hell? WAPW Wrestling. Was breaking up Undertaker and Paul Bear at SummerSlam 1996 done at the right time or done too soon? Uh, when you look at what happened in 96, that was absolutely the right time to do it. You broke apart Taker and Paul Bear before the act got stale and stagnant. You gave life to mankind, really gave him some additional credibility because now you're associating Paul Bear with mankind. He has turned on The Undertaker for six years almost. We have known Paul Bear with The Undertaker, Undertaker with Paul Bear, and now he's going to sit there and he's going to associate himself with mankind? Like, you look at that and you say, my God, like that means that mankind's a really big deal. You know, and it eventually set the table later on down the road for the debuting of Kane in 1997. Um, it was absolutely the right time. Absolutely. And once it happened, like, you know, talk about how long Taker's been around. Taker went through a lot of crap in the first five to six years of his WWF run. It's that 96 to 99 span, I always think, was maybe his best work outside of maybe you want to argue like post Return of the Dead Man work from 2004 to maybe 2008 or 9. Um, you know, those are probably the two truly best all around eras of his career. Wrestling Rants asks, how important were Mankind and Kane to The Undertaker's career, especially around this point? I think they meant everything to him. And he meant everything to them. Like, Mankind was different, man. Like, you know, we think of Mick Foley, we think about, you know, other things. But at that time, like, who Mankind was, like, he was a deranged, psychotic type of individual. Like, it was not really something you saw on the WWE roster at that time. Like, he got more out of The Undertaker, and Undertaker put Mankind on the map. And then when you talk about Kane, like, Kane helped get more out of The Undertaker. You were able to tell more layers to the Taker story, do more things with the character. And all the while, Taker immediately made Kane. Like, think about it like this. 
if you would have sent mankind in his very first like program, like his long-term program, you know, carried months and months in 96, let's say, and it would have been Brett or Sean, and that would have been the story, it wouldn't have worked. Or let me rephrase, it wouldn't have worked nearly as well, and the mankind character wouldn't have gotten over like it did. And you talk about Kane, let's say, in 1997, like even if you had sent Kane at Shawn Michaels, or you sent Kane at an emerging Stone Cold to Steve Austin, or you sent him at Bret Hart then, like it just would not have worked the same. It absolutely would not have been. Um, so these guys were important for Taker at that moment in time in his career, and Taker was absolutely critical and vital for them as they were establishing themselves on the WWF landscape. Uh, Stephen Hilton, 92. Do you believe that combining the corporation and the Ministry of Darkness into a corporate ministry did more damage or more good for the Undertaker's character? Ah, uh, good question. Like more of you probably were huge on the corporate ministry than I was. Um, it wasn't a full hard pass. It was me, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I just preferred the Ministry of Darkness personally. Um, Jack asked, what did you think of the segment where Taker tried to crucify Stephanie and then Austin saved her? Like you're trying to put some type of thing there that even Austin will only put up with so much. Like, I guess it works. Like it was all a big troll, obviously, and everything else. It worked out well, I suppose. Um... It was cool at the time. It was cool at the time. Zach Powers closes this out by asking, Would the Montreal screw job been avoided if Taker had beaten Brett in SummerSlam 1997? Well, sure. Absolutely. But then Vince wouldn't have been able to go out and do the greatest work in the history of the wrestling business that you referenced, the screw job. I mean, it was cute. It was cute. You know, when you're a kid, you think Santa Claus is real, too. Give me an effing break. Come on. Well, you Bret Hart for being in You could absolutely do a work and have one of the participants think it's a shoot or work it into a shoot. And therein lies the genius and the brilliance of it. Um, I think that's where you, it's a fair question to ask. Like, you knew Bret's contract was done. You knew he was probably going to leave sometime around Survivor Series. Why in the hell didn't you ever get the belt off of him? And he could have potentially done it here, and he could have launched uh, Taker and Michaels off on their own thing through Survivor Series. Like, you didn't have to put Brett in that spot. So, interesting thing to think about. Um, but anyways, that's it for this q and I want to thank everybody for submitting their questions. Uh, make sure you check back for the next installment of the 30 Days of Taker video series. Make sure you check out the entire playlist of videos that have been uploaded so far. And we've got, what, nine days, nine videos now. We've got 21 of them a go, Joker. So far, I'm making it. So let's hope I can see it all the way through to November 30th. 